everybody, Frank here at New Testament Explained. This is the second video that looks at the purpose of John's Gospel. Uh, and this video in particular is going to focus on whether John's Gospel was trying to convert and if so, who that was. So the first few slides are going to look at whether John's Gospel was trying to convert Jews or not. And this first slide explores whether John's Gospel was trying to encourage Jews to accept Jesus. The first argument to support this idea is replacement theology. And this is the idea that Jesus was the new covenant. He had come to replace the old covenant of Old Testament scriptures. And that John's gospel using this replacement theology is trying to reach out to Jews and trying to get them to convert. And an example you can use to support this is turning water into wine. The reason this suggests that John is trying to convert Jews is that well, if he wasn't, there would be no need for replacement theology. Trying to show Jesus as the new covenant works on an assumption that he is trying to convert Jews because he is appealing to something they know about, uh, the old covenant, the old testament scriptures, and he's trying to show Jesus as the new one, which if you're not appealing to Jews, then there's no need to make that link. A second argument is one put forward by a scholar called Robinson, and he argues that the purpose of John's gospel was to prevent the Greek speaking Jews from rejecting Jesus um, as the Jews in Palestine had. So that's looking more historically as to why the purpose might be to convert Jews in terms of accepting Jesus. The third argument is that jo uh, the fourth gospel, John's gospel, is filled with debates between Jesus and Jewish leaders. There are many examples you can use. And in all of these, Jesus corrects Jewish belief about God and the Jewish law. And again, it might be there to try and show Jewish readers um, to accept Jesus and sort of giving them reasons why, for example, correcting belief. A counter argument, whilst there's only one, is quite a significant one, that Jesus' enemies are often referred to as the Jews, even by the disciples themselves. Uh, Jesus refers to your law as if he is not a Jew and is trying to distance himself. And again, that could just be how John's writing it as opposed to a historically um, accurate depiction. In John 8, 44, the Jews are called the children of the devil. So all of these negative references to Jews in John's gospel do not indicate that this gospel is trying to convert them. If you try to convert somebody, you generally don't attack them essentially. Um, so whilst it's only one point and you've got three on the argument side, I think this counter argument is something that has a lot of weight behind it and is something you definitely need to take into consideration. The second topic we're going to look at is whether or not John's gospel is trying to appeal to Jews. The first argument in support of this is the fact that John's gospel uses Old Testament symbolism throughout to try and potentially where one might argue appeal to a Jewish audience. You've got references to the manna bread, to the vine, to the shepherd, and these are all terminologies that a Jewish audience would understand. Some people would even say, if you wanted to make a synoptic link to topic 2.1, John's prologue, that the logos is a term that a Jewish audience would be familiar with. Secondly, you can use the point that the gospel begins by imitating the book of Genesis, beginning with in the beginning. Uh, so again, this use of language, this use of literature that a Jewish audience would be familiar with may suggest that John's gospel is trying to convert Jews. In terms of counter arguments, there is a problem with the high Christology in John's gospel. And by high Christology, we mean the sort of close relationship between Jesus and God. In John's gospel, he argues from his prologue onwards that Jesus is sort of the God incarnate. He is the word, the logos. So Jesus also links himself to God using the I am sayings in John's gospel. And just these points in general, the, these high Christology statements would be considered blasphemy. And you could make a link here to topic 5.2 um, conflict that Jesus comes into in John's gospel to prove the fact that this is not appealing to a Jewish audience in terms of these statements and high Christology. Secondly, we've got the phrase, whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. Uh, this is a reference to the Eucharist, but a Jewish reader would not know that. 
and all they would sort of associate with that quote is the fact that eating anything with blood in it is forbidden in Judaism. So straight away that wouldn't be understood by a Jewish reader but potentially just raise alarm bells if anything. So again points on both sides you would need to decide which side you find more compelling was John trying to convert a Jewish audience. And the last topic is the use of language in John's Gospel. Now an argument that John used language to try and appeal to a Jewish reader, to try and convert a Jewish audience, is that the first person to become a disciple is Andrew. He tells his brother Peter, we have found the Messiah. But in this passage, the Aramaic word is used as opposed to the Greek Christos. And again, that might be trying to appeal to a Jewish audience um, and trying to ultimately convert them. A counter argument is use of the words such as logos, which is heavily associated with Greek philosophical thought and parallels have more generally been drawn between John and Gnosticism. That counter argument, you can take that into quite a lot of detail if you use your knowledge from topic 2.1. You could look at Logos being influenced by Hellenism. You could even counter it by saying actually a Jewish audience would be familiar with the word Logos. Maybe it's not something that we can use as a counter argument here. Um, so I think referring back to 2.1, all the video on this channel about Hellenism in general, all the videos on John's prologue in general, um, should give you quite a lot to talk about there. Now we're going to look at whether John's Gospel was trying to convert Gentiles, which means those who were not Jewish. And first of all, we're going to look at whether John was trying to convert Greeks. One key topic we can look at is the key concepts that John uses. And an argument to support the idea that John's gospel was trying to convert Greeks is that he uses abstract ideas that would be familiar to a Greek audience. Light, darkness, logos are all terms that were um, known about in Greek philosophical thought. And again, you can link this all back to topic 2.1, John's prologue and explore the influence of Hellenism or Gnosticism. And this again supports the idea that John is using concepts that a Greek reader may encounter through reading his gospel and understand and make their own connections. A counter argument is that, especially the concept of light also has meaning for a Jewish audience. So a Jewish audience may read a statement such as I am the light of the world and think about the Jewish feast of tabernacles where the temple was lit up. And therefore these abstract ideas might not be trying to convert a Greek audience, but perhaps a Jewish one instead. And you'll notice as I go through this, there's quite a lot of overlap. A second topic we can look at is how the fourth gospel addresses Gentiles. The scholar Dodd thinks that the gospel was a Hellenistic work, which again is a nice uh, link to topic 1.2, world of the first century. Um, and that ultimately this gospel addresses a Greek audience in the town of Ephesus. Dodd sees the gospel as being influenced by Philo of Alexandria and there's broader Greek philosophy such as Gnosticism. So again, using a worldview, Hellenism, that would be familiar to a Gentile audience could indicate that the gospel's purpose was to convert the Greeks. A counter argument is that Gentiles don't feature much in the gospel itself, even though we have concepts that a Greek audience might be familiar with. Matthew's gospel, by contrast, presents Gentiles as recognizing, recognizing Jesus. And you can make a link to topic 1.1 because the Magi visiting the Messiah in Anthology 1 is an example where Gentiles recognize Jesus and who he is. Furthermore, Luke's gospel emphasizes Jesus as offering a universal message which includes Gentiles. So therefore, we may under, undermine this idea of the gospel appealing or trying to convert Greeks because other gospels, such as Matthew and Luke, make more emphasis of Jesus' message or Jesus in general being somebody who is for both the Gentiles and the Jews. And finally, also looking at how John's gospel may appeal to Gentiles, um, an argument you can use is that Jesus rejects many details of the Jewish law, which would have appeared, appealed to Gentiles since the laws were off put in for them. 
uh, Jesus offers a spiritual rebirth and eternal life based on belief in Jesus. So again, this topic's really nice because you can make so many synoptic links. And here you can make a link to the prologue and what it says about belief and becoming a child of God uh, in order to make this point that Jesus is rejecting the details of Jewish law. A counter argument is that specific details about Jerusalem and Jewish festivals are included in John's gospel and this would have been off putting. So what you're trying to decide here is the balance between these two points. Which one is perhaps more important? Do you think that a Greek reading this gospel um, would be put off enough by Jerusalem and the Jewish festivals or would they be able to see perhaps a more general message concerning belief and be compelled to convert? Finally, we're going to look at whether John's gospel was trying to convert a Christian community. I think the word convert is actually a bit misleading here. It's more about clarifying um, clarifying uh, to a Christian community what uh, sort of Jesus was all about and his message. Barrett argues that John's gospel was for the church, especially those who had converted from Judaism. And his reasoning for this is that the gospel sets out to challenge readers um, who had converted from Judaism to believe that Jesus was the son of God and not just the promised Messiah. And this idea of God, uh, of Jesus, sorry, being the word, the logos, uh, and all of those ideas we've explored earlier about who Jesus is. Brown proposes that the gospel was written to support an alien Christian community who had been rejected by the Jewish community. Uh, and it would be worth looking at more detail into Brown's argument more generally about the Joannine community and what he says about them. So he says John's gospel is more aimed at them as evidence through the use of we, for example. And finally, just more generally, it can be argued that John's gospel was written to clarify or counter perhaps false teachings about the person of Jesus. And an example could be Gnostic claims that Jesus wasn't fully human. So it's more just trying to clarify key points to a Christian audience rather than maybe trying to convert Jews to Christianity or trying to convert Gentiles to Christianity. Thank you then for watching this video on whether John's gospel was trying to convert and if so, who it was trying to convert. Please make sure you watch the other two videos in this series on the purpose of John's Gospel. But thank you for watching and make sure you subscribe.